But that was one of the shenanigans. But other than that, there's been so many little things that have gone on. Ooh, I got your ass! Yes! That thing works great. What's up? This is uh, Jerron Wilson. I'm gonna be answering some of your Discord questions today, um, and I hope it goes smooth. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I think this is supposed to be Steez King. Um, he's asking, uh, Jerron, how long did it take you to find that buttery style, or was it a natural thing? <laughs> I think it was pretty much natural. I didn't, I didn't try to have a style. I think it's one of those things with style. You can't force something, something that's just the way you skate. And um, apparently I, it's a good style to some people. So I appreciate that. Yeah, but that's, I was born with that shit. All right, well, we have JC Skate. I always wonder what setup Jerron used in the mouse days. Maybe he can say what was going on back then and what he was using now too. Hmm. Um, back then, I was probably riding, it's probably be a seven and three quarter, give or take, or a seven and a half. Those days are so long ago. I mean, I would definitely probably be more likely be riding either a Carol or shit. When I turned pro, it was my board. <laughs> um, as far as the setup, dude, my for my wheels, I probably early on, I was probably riding some either 49, 50s, we probably could be smaller than that, dude. I, 48s probably weren't too far off. But everything else is relatively the same. I mean, the bolts, uh, yeah, actually, no, I was probably riding Philip bolts. <laughs> um, not that, uh, the new and improved bolts that we have these days. I was riding probably Venture trucks then. Um, right now I ride Royal trucks. Other than that, I mean, my wheel size now is probably I think 51, I've been fit riding 51s for quite some time now. But to what I'm riding now, um, I'm riding probably at 8.25. Um, we've stepped it up quite a bit these days. Um, I'm not as, you know, stepping up to no nine or anything, but I'm definitely having fun with the 8.25. Other than that, yeah, that's, that's what we're using. Taco Panda wants to know, how many garden gnomes do I own? I'm gonna go ahead and say none. I don't own any gnomes. Um, I think they're funny though. Okay, Rest My Chemistry wants to know uh, best memories from skate more filming and his favorite trick from that part of his own and a favorite trick from someone else in the video, i.e. Mikey Taylor's front shove, front crook for the banger. Hmm. Well, my best memories from filming for skate more um, were definitely coming off of, I believe, yeah, right? Um, so I definitely kind of wanted to, I mean, I wanted to have a full part in Yeah Right, and unfortunately that wasn't able to happen. But going into Skate More, I just had uh, just a, what I wanted to do and what I want to accomplish. Where before I just was very carefree and just filming and really not, I don't know, I didn't have like a, a some, somewhat of, would you call a structure. I would just go out and skate and produce footage. That's just how I would do. But with Skate More, I, I think that's when I started to ve develop a more of a, like I said, structure. And ha having that structure, I started to produce, I think, more footage. Um, so I think in general of just having a different outlook going into uh, Skate More just produced great memories for me. Because again, I was going in it with a different attitude. Um, and it was more fulfilling for me in, the, in those moments when, you ha when I had like a goal. You know what I mean? Um, um, as far as my favorite trick from that part, to be honest, um, I don't know if I have a favorite trick from that part. I just know, again, I just had a great time going out filming with, with everybody at that time and, and people that, obviously Colin Kennedy was a huge part of that. Roger Bagley was a part of that. Um, just going out with everybody within those moments in that time. Uh, Giovanni read a big part of it. A lot, creating those moments with everybody that skated for the team. Um, just going on all those trips. I mean, it was a great time, man. Um, but to pinpoint like an actual, like my favorite trick in that, I guess he, it, I like that heel flip when Dill put his hand up at the end. That was a, a great moment when we were in Australia. I don't really have like a favorite trick. That was a dope moment though. I, I'm, I'm stoked that that was captured and you know, seeing the, the after effects of what happens after a trick is landed, you see your homie celebrates you, you know what I mean? It's just a very dope experience. 
Um, as far as someone else's favorite trick, I think you pinpointed Mikey Taylor's uh, front shove, front crook, was definitely a banger. So I'll go with that. Street Walking Cheetah wants to know, what's the highest you've ever gotten? Hmm. Shit. I probably have to say the first couple times I got high, it was some whack ass shit. You know, some, yeah, some brown shit that we probably got from Rampart or some shit. But it did the trick. <laughs> um, I definitely, it was probably, oh, fuck, I, who was the first time I got it? Maybe Daniel Castillo was definitely one of the first people I got high with. Gosh, those are the memories. Um, the, but those memories are fading away. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I say the first couple times I smoked, but that's, that's the highest I've ever got. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dojavar Jr. I, I mean, I really, I'm, I don't know if I said that right. Do you have any family inspired by you to start skating, aside from your son, obviously? And the alternative question was joining the nine club something that puts you out of your comfort zone. Hmm. Yes, my, uh, my cousins inspired me to start skating. I've, uh, I saw them skating in the parking, not in the parking lot, but in their, in their driveway, um, and it just, yeah, I just like can I try and you know all of a sudden they, they help like kind of piece make a board for me and put it together and you know and here we are years later. <laughs> um, was joining the nine clubs something that put me out of my comfort zone? No, um, I think coming on the nine club was very uh, uh, therapeutic going through what I was going through as far as transitioning out of um, a place that I was for like ten years. Everybody here is, is super supportive of each other. It's, I mean, we're all friends, so it makes it easy for me to sit down and actually have conversations about skateboarding. Obviously something that I love dearly. But with these dudes, you know, with everybody in place, it just makes it so much easier. And I mean, it, def it definitely didn't take me out of comf my comfort zone. It made me comfortable. I found that to be very helpful uh, in that transitioning and of not being, you know, at a, a particular place that I was at. And that place was Diamond. So, you know, I was there for, again, for 10 years and then, you know, leaving that environment and, and coming into here was, again, probably the best thing for me. And thank you to the Nine Club. Stom365 asks, best board and shoes you ever rode? Hmm. I'd say my first board. <laughs> it was the best board I've ever rode. Uh, just because, again, it was like cre creating new it was just a whole new journey, you know, of, of turning pro and just like everything just felt right. Um, best shoes I've ever rode? Gosh, that's so tough. Again, I'm gonna have to go back to when, you know, I, I, I had my first shoe. I didn't like that first shoe from DVS that much. It was cool, but my second shoe, that was probably my best shoe that I actually enjoyed riding for quite some time. I made mad different colorways and just rode that shoe. You know, it had a little sh strap on it. I mean, it, it definitely, it, I think it was a good shoe at the time. It was my uh, DVS, my second shoe. Those were my favorites. Do you have that little, that, sh that little gun? Yeah, I want to shoot this motherfucker. Just load it up. All right, this, I'm gonna put this right here just in case. This dude keeps putting, he's landing on my fucking hat and just, are you trying to pull up? I'm gonna get this dude. He's landing on the light. I can't shoot the light. All right, you lucky. It would be perfect to get you right now. PSA Wreckit asks, Jerron, what was the first buttery experience of your life where you're like, damn, that shit is buttery. I, I, I don't know when I started using that shit, to be honest, um, it have to be at least 20 years ago, at least a dub ago. But there's a lot of shit that happens that's buttery. You know what I'm saying? But I can't pinpoint when that, sh you know, experience in my life where I first said it. You know what I'm saying? Damn, that shit's buttery. Noah CFC asks, do you have a favorite memory from a tour you went on in the earlier years of your skate career? I say that first tour that you always go on your first one ever is probably going to be one of the, you know, a standout memory. Um, for me, going on tour with Blind and World, and this was when Rodney basically was this, Rodney Mullen was the, uh, basically the, the team manager, and he took around me, uh, Richard Mulder, Shiloh Greyhouse, Kareem Campbell. I have very, 
fond memories based on, I think we went out in a Toyota, was it a Previa or some shit? And we went just all over the place. And for me, like not going anywhere before, it, it just was like, wow, I'm really doing this shit. And just being on tour with Rodney Mullen and Kareem, like it was just crazy. And I already looked up to Shiloh because he lived in Burbank. He lived in the Valley, and actually North Hollywood, I believe. So I already kind of, I already had a, um, you know, a knowing of who he was, like, just on a local level. So just being on a tour with them and just, like, it was such a fucking cool experience, man. Um, I definitely hold that one really, like, close to my heart. It was definitely, again, once it's your first, you know, trip you're going on. And it was just a major trip. That wasn't, like, I've gone on other, like, little trips leading up to, but this was actual tour. You know, they made T-shirts and, you know, posters and shit. So it was a um, very cool experience, man. Shout out to all them dudes that were on that tour. Switch Mongo. You got a good question. He says, uh, how about some stories from the old world warehouse? Not the skate park, warehouse shenanigans back in the day. <laughs> there was a lot of shenanigans going on. But the main shenanigan stands out. I've definitely brought this shit up before where they had a product room and was just, you know, in this particular time, it just happened to be a bunch of wheels. I mean, to be honest, there's probably like, it had to have been a thousand sets of wheels. It was so many, it was just like, it was insane. I'd never seen a box of wheels like that before. But anyways, um, Tim Gavin and Javante Turner all decided that, you know, we were gonna go take some wheels. And I'm, for me at the time, I was just like, ah, oh, we can get a couple sets of wheels, whatever. And they just started floodgating them. So I participated and I ended up getting a bunch of wheels too. Um, I was following their lead. You know, I was the new guy. So, you know, if they said I was all right to do that, then I thought it was all right to do that. I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> Um, but I believe those wheels were Plan, Plan B Blue Balls, that's what they were called, and um, the Henry Terminator wheel. So it was two sets of wheels. I was just like, again, I probably had like, uh, I'd like to say probably like 30, 40 sets of wheels. And just, they, again, I looked towards Tim and, and Javante and they were like, yeah, go ahead, do whatever. And I was like, cool. But that was one of the shenanigans. But other than that, there's been so many little things that have gone on. Ooh, I got your ass! Yes! That thing works great. I mean, you can't go around with these things. But yeah, that was, a, that was one of the many shenanigans that went down back in the day. Um, you know, we were just a bunch of wild and ass teenagers, man. So we definitely got into a bunch of, you know, that's obviously, again, just one little story, but there's many stories, and I'm not gonna go and divulge other stories. Best memories, best dudes to be with. We got another question for you guys. This is a dope-ass question. Kyle Rodriguez wants to know, what was the feeling like in your gut showing up to the Back to the City contest when you and the team had girl shirts on? When Tanowski and Rocco found out you were all leaving their teams. It was a bittersweet moment, real talk, um, because we had to jump on the phone and kind of like tell Rodney that we were quitting. And that definitely wasn't, uh, tell Rodney Mullen, that, and that wasn't a, a, a fun moment, but showing up to the contest after everything was said and done, man, it was sickest feeling ever. You know what I mean? We were starting something new, and just to be a part of something like that, it was just mind blowing for me. You know, kind of a surreal moment, to be honest. But it was definitely something that, you know, um, was meant to happen at that time. You know, I think with Rick and Mike and, and, and Meg and, and, and Spike, you know, putting this together and, and, and just rolling the dice, it was just a, a beautiful moment. And I think that, you know, all the people that were involved at that time knew, knew just that and were honored to do that. So I think coming out to the contest, it was just like an energy, you know, and it was definitely felt that's for damn sure. But yeah, that was probably, a, a, I mean, one of the best moments is to, to be a part of, you know, like again, I said it was a bittersweet of, of having to leave and, and, and leave in that fashion as far as just jumping on the phone and then passing the phone to somebody else to kind of do the same thing. It was a weird moment, but also the sickest moment ever. Glowade666, what's the most satisfying trick you've ever done? I say learning switch tray flips. That was a moment where I was like, I mean, fuck, I was like probably 14 or 15 years old and I I just surprised the shit out of myself because I didn't know if I could do it or not. You know, I think I was, fuck, I think the first, the real first time was probably at Embarcadero or right before I went to, um, took the trip to go to Embarcadero because I was learning him in like in my local little parking lot by my house or whatever. And then um, I was skating the little three at Embarcadero 
And I think I, I remember, sh uh, I ended up shooting an ad with the switch tray. But that was, I think at that time was the most gratifying because you, you, when you're working on something for a little while and then all of a sudden you got it and you're, and you're stomping it and you're, you're landing it and it's, it's becoming like consistent and comfortable. Um, I think at that time that was probably the most satisfying trick. Overall in my whole career, I don't know, man. Like there's just, I think riding away on your skateboard is the most gratifying trick ever. You know, whether any trick that you're trying, rolling away and you actually you know you've been working on something for so long, that is the best feeling, you know? Again, I, I say it all the time on the show, it's just like, you know, I'm gonna go get a good dinner, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch my shows. There's just, you know, you, whatever you're gonna do, it just sets you up, whether I'm gonna go fucking have a drink at the bar, whatever the case is. I just know that the day has been, it's been a good day when you, when you land the trick that you've been trying for a little while or a long time. Obviously, it's a little more gratifying if you are trying that shit for a while. Depends on how you're looking at it. Some people, you know, look at it a little different, like, fuck, finally conquered it, whatever. Me, every time I was hard, going hard in the paint, I would always be like super stoked if I was to get it, if it was like, if I was trying that shit for like three hours, I'd be like, yes, you know? So um, again, riding away is the most satisfying trick.